Welcome to Digital Marketing Musings. Each episode, we choose a different expert to discuss the latest and greatest in digital marketing. Today, we're interviewing Andy Fisher about the complex and exciting world of advanced TV. I'm Gaia Reed. And I'm Andrea McCartney. And this is Digital Marketing Musings. Thanks for tuning in to Digital Marketing Musings. Today, we're joined by Andy Fisher, head of Mercury Advanced TV. With over eight years at Merkel, Andy's primary responsibility as head of Advanced TV is driving person-based marketing and big data adoption in all areas of television, including linear, addressable, connected, programmatic, and cross-channel planning and measurement. Welcome to our show, Andy. Thanks for having me. So Andy, what is Advanced TV? Um, oh boy, what do we, that's, that's a Start very simple sounding first. question that has a lot to unpack. So in, in, in its simplest form, what it really is, is it's leveraging, it's leveraging um, custom audiences, custom defined audiences in every form of television. And that includes audience-based linear, that includes addressable television, connected television, premium online video, programmatic, local, um, planning <laughs> tools, you, you name it. Every, it's basically you, using, using every form or using data to drive, um, to drive planning, insights, and activation and measurement for every type of television um, out there. Okay, so how does advanced TV differ from how we think of regular TV buys? I know you talked about a lot of different forms of advanced TV. Um, so can you give some context for that? Sure. So um, there's 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 different flavors, but let me start with linear, for example. So historically, linear TV has been purchased based on, um, you know, based on um, Nielsen breaks. So um, I would like to buy um, GRPs and reach women 35 plus because that's the that's my plan. Um, what 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 advanced TV really does is it lets you say, OK, I'm going to make an audience of 10 million people that I would like to reach and say that audience is is built um, based on research thinking or even scored by, by AI and then go and actually purchase inventory that indexes very highly against that particular audience and then actually guarantee that you reach the audience that you want to. Right. And so that's on the linear side of the business, on the addressable side of the business and the connected side of the business. It's about going out and getting those exact individuals or households and showing them the um, and, and showing them exactly the message that you want them to see. And programmatically, what you're doing is you're you're leveraging a programmatic tool to um, to plan and activate across all different flavors of um, of television but at the end of the day it's about the audience it's about knowing the audience that you want to reach being able to plan and reach that particular audience know that you've reached that particular audience and then be able to perform ROI calculations so you know what the value is of your campaign for that particular audience very cool sounds like it has a lot of data um, and maybe ways that other channels don't or traditional TV didn't um, how does something like YouTube fit into this? Is that separate? Like what, where does yes. that fit in? Okay, okay, so it's a it's a good question. Um, so just from a, a, a categorization perspective, I like to think of the world as there's a linear world, there's an addressable world, there's a connected TV world, there's a premium online video world, there's a programmatic world underlying all of it that lets you plan and buy in all those pieces. YouTube sort of spans two pieces of that, right? So there's so YouTube really can be the um, premium online video, right? It can fit into that. But also YouTube TV is arguably a, 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 a meaningful connected TV platform. And so, um, you know, you, you would say it in the same breath that you would say a Hulu or a Roku or a Samsung or you know, um, you know, someone like that. So it really falls into those, it really falls into those two categories, premium online video and connected TV. It does feel like every advertiser under the sun is just like bursting to talk about uh, advanced TV right mm -hmm. now or connected TV. Um, so is 2021 the year of advanced TV or like what is driving this current trend in, in just increasing digital spend into ATV? Okay, yeah. So um, 
Great question. You're, I think you're absolutely right. It's um, connected TV is hot right now. Um, what is going on in the marketplace is a couple things here are, are happening. Um, the first thing that's happening is that, um, you know, COVID has caused a lot of advertisers, a, a lot of advertisers who spend a lot in traditional linear to really look at their budgets and really and really start to say, how can we, in, in some cases, lower those budgets? And, and um, in, in cases either lo while lowering budgets or while maintaining budgets, um, how can we make our TV more accountable and more um, and, and more data driven, right? And so what is happening is you're seeing budgets move from traditional linear into these advanced forms of TV, right? Um, that are more data driven and more accountable. At the same time, what is happening is partially due to, to COVID and just due to the nature of how our, the media industry is changing. Um, there's just a lot more viewership of, um, of, of these different channels. So when you think of, you know, all of the major connected TV apps that have emerged, right, from, you know, from the, the Peacocks and the Paramounts and the, you know, the, um, you know, what's of everything that Disney's doing and um, HBO Max, right, which is coming out with their ad supported their ad supported stuff um, to the, um, the, the, the and then another thing that's happening is the gener a generation of TVs is being replaced by smart TVs. And so you're seeing, you know, the Roku's and the Samsung's of the world just have it just scaling up and having um, having more inventory. So it's kind of a two, you know, two things are happening once that there's demand being pushed in. And at the same time, there is um, a lot more inventory becoming available. So um, it's, I mean, when you think about it too, it's, it's how people want to watch TV, right? You know, how do you want to watch TV? You want to turn on your TV. You want there to be an easy to use app. You find what you want to watch. You watch what you want to watch. If it's going to be ad supported or you're going to pay for it, you decide, right? And off you go. And so um, TV is just moving towards that model. And kind of an interesting analogy is that um, audio moved towards that model some time ago, right? And so really, you know, you, as you saw the rise of Spotify, you know, of, of, of Spotify and Pandora and the iHeart apps and things like that, it's, it's, a similar, it's a similar ecosystem, right? It's just much simpler to do in audio than it is in television, so it's taken longer. But it's happening right now, and it's it's where the massive growth is in the media business. So everyone wants wants um, wants wants to be there, and I, it makes sense. You know, be in front of your be in front of your customers. And you referenced, uh, I think you said holding holding TV accountable mm -hmm. is kind of like part of that. When you say that, do you mean like demanding a a, a, a trackable ROI on that media spend? That's yes, yes, absolutely. So, so there's really two ways, two ways to sort of think about measurement, right? So there's, when when you're talking about hold, you know, holding TV accountable, there's delivery measurement, like did I get what I thought I would get, and mm -hmm. you know, did I reach the audience that I thought I would re reach? Did I get the frequency that I'd want to reach? And in advanced TV, you have a lot more. There's a lot more accountability there, but. For many flavors of advanced TV, there's also a lot more accountability from a measurement perspective. Because one of the great things about um, about advanced TV, and let me let me give let me let me do let me step back for a second and sort of define the difference between addressable and connected TV, because this will be helpful. So, the way addressable TV works is we define addressable TV is uh, linear addressable inventory plus VOD, video on demand, that is sold by the, um, the, the MVPDs, multi-channel video platform distributors. Um, and so you think of those as like, you know, um, you know AT&T, DirecTV, um, Comcast, Verizon Fios, Dish, those sort of people. And the way that works is that, this is that the networks leave some time blank in the TV feed, two minutes per hour. And then those companies, those companies go out and sell advertising, and then they can insert the advertising in specific set-top boxes for specific households, right? Now, um, connected TV, on the other hand, or what sometimes we call connected TV OTT or over the top, um, that's when things are delivered digitally, 
to your um, to your to your television set. Um, and so examples of those are people like the Hulus of the world and the HBO Maxes of the world and the Peacocks of the world, but also the um, devices of the world. Right. You know, the Roku's of the world in Roku. Um, then also, you know, all, all sorts of things like Sling and, you know, and the Fubos and Zumos and Plutos and Tubies. And it just kind of goes on and on and on. Right. In fact, there's probably too far too much complexity in that space. But um, that that will solve itself. But the um, but but that's digital delivery. Now, in the case of advanced of addressable TV, what's really cool, what's really cool about it, I think, is that the cable companies know who the household is because they pay a bill, right? Mm -hmm. And so every every cable company every, or every person who's watching that is served a uh, or every household that is watching that is served um, addressable TV has very 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 high quality data associated. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you when you say, OK, there's a list of people that I want to reach and the campaigns run and you are reaching those people. And when you get data back and perform analysis, you are matching that data perfectly. There is no probabilistic stuff. There is no there is no cookies. There is no bots. There is no fraud. There is no viewability issues. There's, it's just a perfect match. <laughs> and so you can perform a much higher quality um, of ROI analytics um, on in an addressable environment. In a connected environment, it can be a little bit different because some connected TV is a subscriber and some is not. And for the stuff that is subscriber, you can perform absolutely equal quality. Of match, but for the stuff that's not, mm. then you have to do things like you know you then you have to use techniques to be able to match things, and that's that's a little bit harder, but it's completely doable. But if that starts to look a little bit more like digital, so you know it's 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 a it's a really really high quality environment for our AI calculations. I wonder if. Um... In the second case, where it's say say it's Hulu, mm -hmm. and you're logging into your Hulu account, like it's kind of a little bit more one to one mm -hmm. versus just serving to a household where you could have a family with like kids yeah. and parents, and ideally the target audience is like a father, mm -hmm. uh, but actually the kids saw the ad. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like, and of course they're like family accounts yeah. on, on a lot of the streaming platforms, but it seems like you might have directionally more one-to-one -one matching yeah so the the way the way matching typically works is that um the the um the the the, the um bill payer in the case of the addressable tv or the login in the case of connected tv um what you do what you do is you can figure out the who everyone is in the household and then when you want to reach an audience, you like map to you map to the household based on them having a particular member. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's very important to understand um, these TV, these TV approaches, you're buying households. Right. You're mm -hmm. buying impressions to households. And that's kind of the nature of the um, th that's the that's the nature of the medium. And yep. that can be a that can be that can be a really powerful thing because a, a lot of things that you want to advertise are actually household decisions. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 a householded medium rather than a rather than digital, which sometimes can be thought of as an individual medium, but oftentimes now is really almost like a cookie-based medium, right? Where one person can actually have multiple browsers or multiple cookies that are sort of stitched together. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's that that's that's the nature of it. But historically, what would have happened is you would have said, "Okay, I want to buy people who." You would have been limited to be able to say, "Oh, I want to reach people who have the presence of children in the household or who fall mm -hmm. into a certain age category." Now I can say, "I would like to reach Guy and Andrea, and reach them." <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the difference. Cool. Targeting seems amazing with this. Like I think about like SEO and how limited we are with targeting and like to be able to have this sort of information would be amazing. It's never going to happen. Pigs will fly first, but it's the dream. Yeah. The other great thing about it too is, 
you know, people are talking about the death of the third party cookie. And this isn't completely unaffected by that, right? Because their cookies were never <laughs> used in this in this medium to begin with. Your um, your TV doesn't have a you know your TV doesn't act like a browser. Your TV doesn't run JavaScript. Well, it does run right. you know it does run some scripts, but not the same <laughs> way that your 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 laptop might or your phone might. Right. Um, it getting back to the conversation of like why advertisers usually come to us for mm -hmm. help with this or, or what they're normally trying to achieve. It sounds like uh, you're saying, you know, had to reevaluate budgets. Mm -hmm. They want to get an ROI number from running uh, TV support. Um, I guess my question goes into attribution mm -hmm. and it seems like still a very relatively new space and complex space. Um, but how does, uh, unless you're doing some sort of like match market, go dark mm -hmm. test, like how, how do you dedupe across like TV and other channels? Is that a capability yet? Or that is still off on, on their horizon? Oh, well, the deduping question. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's hard. Um, and so there are various techniques for it in various places where it works well. So for example, one place where it does really work well is um, in addressable TV. And the reason why is no one has, basically no one has two different cable companies, mm. right? Yeah. And so they're different footprints. And um, what you've actually seen is that they're so different that the cable companies have realized it's easier to um, actually band together that they're really not in competition from an, uh, from an advertising perspective. And so that's why you see things like the National Addressable Consortium form, which is a combination of Xander, Frontier, and Altice, and why you see an ampersand form, which is a combination of Cox, Charter, Comcast, and uh, Verizon. And so that dedupes very well naturally. Um, however, once you start to get into the world of connected TV and things like that, it gets much harder to dedupe. Um, there are ways, you know, if you can get the data back, then of course, then there are ways of deduping. Also, one thing that people do too is they um, is they can do a lot of deduping within the programmatic platforms. And so, if you buy all of your, um, if you buy all of your or the majority of um, of TV in a programmatic manner, then you can de you can dedupe that way. You just have to be really careful because not all TV or not all TV content that you want to buy is available in every platform. Mm. So, like some things are platform specific. Like, so for example, you know, Amazon Fire is only available in Amazon, and <laughs> you know, there's a relationship with Roku and OneView, and you know, so on and so forth. So. You know, you have to be a little bit, you, 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 you have, there, there's always exceptions. It, it's something the industry is striving for, but it is not something that, um, it is not something that, um, it's, it's not something that's fully there yet. And quite frankly, I don't know if it ever will be. I mean, I think the industry will take fits and starts and it never really happened in digital. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, like try deduping a search in a display campaign. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> see what happens. Right, <laughs> so um, you know, I feel like that's, a... that's the real talk line that no yeah. one wants to ever say. <laughs> no one ever yeah. wants to say like, "Hey, there's literally never going to be a perfect like attribution model yeah. for everything." Um, but it does mm -hmm. feel very true. Yeah, but 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 it's getting it's getting better. It's get it's it's getting better, and the the you know the it's it's funny because a lot of the best measurement tools are and for things like addressable TV, just test versus control to measure incrementality. Mm -hmm. Really doing really good test versus control designs and measuring incrementality, and it's funny because a lot of the math is exactly the same math that we used to do in direct mail in the '70s. Mm -hmm. So um, you know it's you know woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> Good for us, but 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 like I say, it is the attribution can be very high quality, um, and also it's important too that there's a lot of techniques in the world of advanced TV around um, reaching and or about being able to deliver incremental reach. Mm. That's a really popular thing for big brand advertisers, right? As cord cutting continues and less people are watching network TV, a lot of brand advertisers are saying, okay, how do I take some of my network TV budget? 
shifted into say connected TV and then um, and ensure that I'm actually reaching people who I wouldn't have reached in my normal TV budgets. Mm. And um, there's a lot of approaches that there's a lot of approaches and a lot of publishers that can help with that. And so that's an ever popular one. It's it's interesting. I I really see as I've looked at the marketplace, I really see there's sort of two sides. There's sort of the brand advertisers who are usually typically big in TV, in traditional TV, and they're moving into this world of um, advanced TV, and they want better data and they want better ROI, um, but they really really want um, an improved reach. Whereas there's a lot of digital people who are moving into this too. And they're really saying, oh, well, this is kind of an extension of digital. And so I want all the good stuff that I've come to expect in digital, like programmatic and the ability to, and, you know, and a really, really good ROI and things like that. And so you're sort of seeing these two philosophies sort of intermingle. Mm. So that's, that's a fun place to be. That's a helpful perspective. <laughs> Sounds like it. So I know we've talked a bit about other channels, you know, digital, we've touched on quite a bit. Um, how does running support for ATV potentially affect these other channels? Um, I mean, from like, from the start, it seems like a great way to, to improve branding and that sort of thing and get that messaging out there as well as just general, um, if there's new product lines available, that sort of thing. Um, so curious yeah, your thoughts I mean, on this. Yeah. And if I, if I, if I, if I understand your question, right, I mean, the, it's not, it's not really clear where all the boundaries are between these different types of channels, right? right? And so, um, you know, digital starts to the digital, then you know, digital video, and then premium <laughs> online video, and then full episode <laughs> players, and connected TV with digital extension, and it's like it, 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 they really sort of all they're really all sort of merged into each other. Um, but the most important thing I can say to people is whether or not you're doing digital, whether or not you're doing connected TV, start with your audience, right? Start by being able to own, <laughs> to understand, own, be able to describe and have your audience. And so that you can then activate that, you can then get insights about that audience and change it as it's needed um, and activate that audience everywhere. And if you're activating that audience digitally and you understand how that works, your connected TV life is gonna be much easier. And if you're activating that audience in, in, in audience-based linear TV, then it's easier to move that to digital. But the, the real key is to really start with your audience, and you know, start with your audience, and um, and 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 the and the, the creative messaging that you want to that you want to that you want to share, right? Sort of, I, I like to sort of worry about that rather than channel, because then the channels become obvious. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, from from like the SEO perspective, I'm thinking of like what can we do within the organic SERP to support um, the different messaging that we're we're promoting through our ATV campaigns and that sort of thing. Guy, I'm sure you're yeah. thinking something similar along SEM lines as well. Yeah, well, that's one thing too is you can learn a lot from search, mm -hmm. right? And so um, you know, there's 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 research that you can get from it. There's analytics that you can get from it. So when you're driving content, when you're driving people to content pages, then once they're on those content pages, you can use that information to build an yeah. audience. And so um, you know, so so it should all work together. Now it's hard, you know, you know, logistically, operationally, to make to to make everything work together. Yeah. Um, but it is something that absolutely should be it should be doable. In fact, there's even techniques out there where um, things where where search is actually used to measure TV. Interesting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so, for example, you know, if you run an ad campaign, you'd expect searches for certain keywords to go up. And so there's companies that actually map the two of those together using AI and some really sophisticated modeling techniques to actually try to try and figure out, um, you know, how how search can be treated as a measurement system for television. Yeah, I know, at least on the Google side for clients who we've run YouTube on, um, we can mm -hmm. get like a, a brand lift studies or certain mm -hmm. search lift studies for audiences who have seen the videos. So I'd, I'd expect it would be a very similar uh, extension to that. Oh, yeah. And it's super, super common. 
and um, you know we we at um, we at Merkel um, will perform those those studies, but we have a lot of clients we work with that have a third party perform those particular studies, mm -hmm. right? And um, you know, there's every flavor of it. In, there's every flavor of, of it imaginable. But that is really standard with with big buys, right? Particularly if you're doing a direct I/O buy with, say, a big addressable TV platform. You know, you can just they basically they have a PowerPoint and they're like, okay, here's the here's our list of study vendors. Which one would you like? <laughs> <laughs> sort of circle. So, um, yeah, that's that's super common. And and by the way, we're you know, like I say, we're on that list. But uh, um, but there's uh, many others too. Um, and so it's it, it's interesting because doing all that often just sort of breaks down into the matter of who actually has the data. Right. So if you are, um, you know, if you're a CPG company, right, you, well, you might not have your, you, you might have some direct consumer data. But for, for most CPG companies, the majority of data that they have is they, or the majority of sales is actually owned by a retailer. So you have to go in and you have to get someone like IRI to do your study. If you're um, a fast food um, company, maybe the majority of your the, your conversion event is is foot traffic. Mm -hmm. So you need a location vendor to provide study, to provide the study. You know, um, and there, there's just you know many many examples of that too. So, um, but the important thing is to that that I I always tell people um, when you're doing these campaigns, you have to figure out who's doing what. Who's doing the study? Who's doing the analytics? What the metrics are? Um, how all the data is going to flow back and forth? And that all has to be arranged before the buy is agreed to. You cannot fix that stuff in post. This, I know. I've tried. <laughs> this sounds like very reasonable uh, advice for, for everyone who's looking to explore into this yeah. space. Any final tips or takeaways for businesses and advertisers who are um, looking to explore more into uh, advanced TV or connected TV? Sure. So, um, yeah, so a couple things. So, you know, this, the, I, you know, I might be a little biased here, <laughs> but I believe this is the future, right? This is what people, you know, this is what people want. People want great content big screen on their smart TV. They want to sit back. They want to pick what they want, when they want it. This is this is where the world is going, right? So it's important to um, it's important to sort of get in, um, get get into this world. But the a great thing about this world, and a lot of our clients have, have adopted this strategy, it's actually really easy to do a land and expand strategy. You do not have to go all in at once. Like literally, a lot of our clients who, who who are now very very all in started by saying, you know what, we're going to pick one addressable TV platform, and then we're going to buy on that. We're going to make sure we understand how it works and how the, what the metrics are and the data that we can get back. And then once we do that, then maybe we'll do another one, and then we'll do another one, or we you know, and or we'll start with one or two of the major connected TV platforms, mm -hmm. and we'll buy that way, or we'll we'll sort of dip our toe in the water programmatically and start to buy that way. So it's actually the, the, the barrier to entry is actually really low. Like, and this is not something where you have to say, okay, you know, you're either in, a, you're, you're either in at 250 million or not, <laughs> you know, you can, you know, you can do one buy in a quarter and, and, and get and, and, and get used to it and start to understand it and get all the details. So land and expand can be, can be very successful. It's not like uh, an advertiser who's trying to purchase a Super Bowl uh, ad. Placement. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, these are not uh, these are not these are not Super Bowl spots. <laughs> um, you know, um, one day these will be the, this will be the measurement for Super Bowl spots. But I don't know. I still think the super the, the big tent Super Bowl stuff will still be will still look very traditional for for quite some time. Now extensions around the Super Bowl spots mm -hmm. are going to have all these advanced techniques. So, um, but it's it's a uh, it's it's exciting and it's changing. Um, and then the other thing too is that I would also add this: um, when you look at the Loom escapes, when you hear people talk about this stuff, it is a stew of acronyms. 
in confusion. <laughs> and it is a, you know, you hear about audience based learning, like ABL and ATV and CTV and MVPDs and VMVPDs and, uh, you know, um, and how does programmatic TV work? And what's, there's this thing called, na this thing emerging called national addressable or national linear addressable. And, you know, who's buying who with what DMP and this and that and that. And the reason why it is sounds so confusing is because it is so confusing. And um, I get confused. And I get confused because things change every day, right? There's some announcement. Someone buys someone else. Um, someone announces a new thing. It is really confusing and complicated. And so just sort of acknowledging that and sort of accepting that goes a long way to making, to making me feel better about, <laughs> about it. And it's something that I recommend that that other people do. It is a confusing hodgepodge. It looks like a confusing, complicated, crazy ecosystem because it is a confusing, complicated, crazy ecosystem. So, it, and that's okay. Like, be at peace with that. <laughs> that's my other suggestion. I'm, I'm sure that our listeners who are just trying to dip their toe into, into this <laughs> world are probably already experiencing that for themselves and mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. find your words to be uh, of comfort if nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Think of it as a really fun puzzle. <laughs> I feel like that's marketing in a, in a nutshell of like, how can we like layer everything together and piece it together and make it fit? But this is certainly uh, a, yeah. a niche of that or a, a segment of that. Yeah. And then I'd, I'd also add one, one, one other thing. Um, and this is a thing that is not talked about enough in the industry. Um, and this is sort of my third piece of advice, like in the world of audience based linear and in the world of addressable TV, these are fraud free mediums. The world of connected TV is not a fraud free medium. There is fraud and it is a problem. And I think that, um, it's important to address that problem head on. And there are ways of preventing fraud, right? Whether it's technology that you use or understanding who you're buying from and, 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 um, and, and, and how deals like PMPs are set up programmatically and such. But it's really important to have those conversations up front. Like don't shy away from those, don't shy away for those, from those conversations, right? What are we doing to, what are we doing to protect against fraud? How are we, how are we making sure that there's, that, that there's, these are fraud free buys. And um, it's just really important to have, to have that conversation direct. And because one of the reasons is, you know, connected TV tends to be a higher CPM environment. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where if you're a fraudster, you go to where the high CPMs are. So, you know, make more money. And, um, and then in addition, you know, TVs are not browsers, right? So they, so, so a lot of the anti-fraud technology doesn't work. Um, and so, you have to you have to do other things. Well, you have to use technology, but there's other things like really understanding your supply chain that can help make sure that you're that you're fighting that you're fighting fraud. So, don't be shy about having those conversations and having those conversations often. Mm. So, because um, you know we want this to we 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 want to ensure that everyone's getting value out of all this, right? So, that's my third thing. Don't want to end on a downer, so you've got to ask another question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think those those are wise words. Yeah, and definitely something for someone new new to the game to to dip into. Yeah, and that's actually being new to the game actually gives you permission to ask about that stuff. So that's why. So you know, you can you can use that as an a you can use that as an advantage. But you know, um, this is. This, this is where where we seem to go, where, where the world is seeming to go. And, you know, there's been a saying, right, that COVID, did, COVID basically accelerated us forward six years and in, um, in six months. Um, <laughs> and it's pretty obvious that it has done that in many areas, you know, from digital payments to telemedicine to distance learning to working at home and telecommuting. Well, connected TV is one of those places. Very true. Where it's just accelerated. We were just, we just see six years of growth in <laughs> six months. So, um, you know, that's, that, that, that's where we are. So let's, let's use it. Cool. Well, 
That's it for this episode of Digital Marketing Musings. Huge, huge thanks to our guest, Andy Fisher, for joining us today. Thank you all. Stay in touch and let us know what you want to hear about next by emailing us at digitalmarketingmusings at merkelinc.com. Also, if you've not already, please hit that subscribe button and rate and review us. It helps others find us. And please be sure to tell a friend about the show. Until next time, I'm Andrea McCartney. And I'm Gaia Reed. Bye. Bye.